Hello. Oh, I can't actually see the text here. Okay. So. Um, continuing on with some reading today. And yesterday we got as far as to see or seeing. And let me sh just check out. Maybe I can do something with the light. I don't think I know too much about good lighting. What is this? So I'm sitting over here. That's probably fine. Something like that. And yeah, we're back again at the place of me and things and um, yeah, it's all good. We're reading about the Satipatthana Vipassana, um, a talk given by the Venerable Mahasi Saira and Today I hope we're going to go through seeing and hearing. And so I just want to get right into reading because so we don't have to take up too much time and we can actually just get into it. So make sure to check out the other videos in this series of the Satipatthana Vipassana and this is going to be part two. And now I'm waving to you. You're probably around here. There's a thing on the camera. Okay. So here we go. Seeing. People generally believe that in the case of seeing, it is the eye which actually sees. They think that seeing and the eye are one and the same thing. They also think seeing is eye. I see things. The I, seeing, and I are one and the same person. In reality, it, this is not so. The I is one thing, and seeing is another. And there is no separate entity such as I or ego. There is only the reality of seeing coming into being, depending on the I. Just gonna sit in a little bit more comfortable position, a meditative position on my chair. And here we go. To give an example, it is like the case of a person who sits in a house. The house and the person are two separate things. The house is not the person, nor is the person the house. And similarly, it is so at the time of seeing. The eye and seeing are two separate things. The eye is not seeing, nor is seeing the eye. To give another example, it is just like the case of a person in a room who sees many things when he opens the window and looks through it. There's like a window right there, and there, and there. You see? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, to give another example, it's just like the case of a person in a room who sees many things when he opens the window and looks through it. If it is asked, who is, who is it that sees? Is it the window or the person that actually sees? The answer is, the window does not possess the ability to see, it is only the person who sees. If it is asked again, will the person be able to see things on the outside of the window? The answer will be, it is not possible to see things through the wall without the window. One can only see through the window. And similarly, in the case of seeing, 
there are two separate realities of the eye and seeing. The eye is not seeing, nor <laughs> the eye is not seeing, nor is seeing the eye. Yet there cannot be an act of seeing without the eye. In reality, seeing comes into being depending on the eye. It is now evident that in the body there are only two distinct elements of materiality, eye, and mentality, seeing. At every moment of seeing. In addition, there is also a third element of materiality, the visual object. At times the visual object is noticeable in the body and at times it is noticeable outside the body. With the addition of the visual object, there will then be three elements, two of which the eye and the visual object are materiality, and the third of which seeing is mentality. The eye and the visual object being materiality. Oh, the eye and the visual object being materiality do not possess the ability to know an object while seeing. Being mentality can know the visual object and what it looks like. Now it is clear that there exists only the two separate elements of materiality and mentality. At the moment of seeing and the arising of this pair of separate elements is known as seeing. People who are without the training in and knowledge of insight meditation hold the view that seeing belongs to or is self, ego, or a living entity or a person. They believe that seeing is I, or I am seeing, or I am knowing. This kind of view or belief is called Sakya Diti in Pali. Sakya means the group of materiality, Rupa, and mentality, Nama, as they exist distinctively. Diti means a wrong view or belief. The compound word Sakya Diti means a wrong view or belief in self with regard to Nama and Rupa which exist in reality. For a greater clarity, we will explain further the manner of holding the wrong view of belief. At the moment of seeing, the things which actually exist are the eye, the visual object, both materiality and seeing, mentality. Nama and Rupa are reality, yet people hold the view that this group of elements is self, or ego, or a living entity. They consider that seeing is I, or that, or that which is seen is I, or I see my own body. Thus, this mistaken view is taking the simple act of seeing to be self, which is Sakya Diti the wrong view of self. As long as one is not free from the wrong view of self, one cannot expect to escape from the risk of falling into the miserable realms of the hells, the animals or the petas. Though yet one, though one may be able, oh, I'm sorry, Though one may be leading a happy life in the human or deva world by virtue of one's merits, yet one is liable to fall back into the miserable states of existence at any time when one's demerits operate. For this reason, the Buddha pointed out that it is essential to work for the total removal of the wrong view of self. 
let a monk go forth mindfully to abandon view of self. Sakyaditi Pahanaya Sato Biko Paribaye. To explain, uh, though it is the though it is the wish of everyone to avoid old age, disease and death, no one can prevent their inevitable arrival. After death, rebirth follows. Rebirth in any state of existence does not depend on one's own wish. It is not possible to avoid rebirth in the hell realm, the animal realm, or the realm of the petas by merely wishing for an escape. Rebirth takes place in any state of existence as the consequence of one's own deeds. There is no choice at all. For these reasons, the round of birth and death, samsara, is very dreadful. Every effort should therefore be made to acquaint oneself with the miserable conditions of samsara, and then work for an escape from samsara, for the attainment of nibbana. If an escape from samsara, if an escape from samsara as a whole is not possible for the present, an attempt should be made for an escape at least from the round of rebirth in the hell realms and the animal realms and the peta realms, the ghost realms. In this case, it is necessary... In this case, it is necessary to work for the total removal with, within oneself of Sakyaditi, which is the root cause of rebirth in the miserable states of existence. Sakyaditi can only be destroyed completely by the noble path and fruit. The, th the three supramundane virtues of morality, concentration and wisdom it is therefore imperative to work for the development of these virtues. How should one do the work? By means of noting or observing, one must go out from the jurisdiction of defilements, kilesa. One should practice by constantly noting or observing every act of seeing, hearing, etc., which are the constituent uh, physical and mental processes, till one is freed from Sakya Diti, the wrong view of self. For these reasons, advice is always given here to take up the practice of Vipassana meditation. Now, yogis have come here for the purpose of practicing Vipassana meditation, who may be able to complete the course of training and attain the noble path in no long time. The view of self will then be totally removed and security will be finally gained against the danger of rebirth in realms of the hells, animals and petas. In this respect, the exercise is simply to note or observe the ex existing elements in every act of seeing. It should be noted as seeing, seeing, on every occasion of seeing. By the term note or observe or contemplate, it is meant the act of keeping the mind fixed on the object with a view to knowing it clearly. When this is done and the act of seeing is noted as seeing, seeing, at times the visual object is noticed, at times consciousness of seeing is noticed. At times, the eye base, the place from which one sees, is noticed. It will serve the purpose if one can notice uh, distinctly any of the three. If not, based on this act of seeing, there will arise Sakya Diti, which will view in the 
which will view it in the form of a person or as belonging to a person and as being permanent, pleasurable and a self. This will arouse the defilements of craving and attachment, which will in turn prompt deeds and the deed will bring forth rebirth in a new existence. And this, the process of dependent origination operates in the vicious circle of samsara, revolves. What? Thus, the process of dependent upper. Thus, the process of dependent origination, operates, and the vicious circle of samsara revolves incessantly. In order to prevent the revolving of samsara from this source of seeing, it is necessary to note seeing, seeing, on every occasion of, of seeing. Hearing, etc. Similarly, in the case of hearing, there are only two distinct elements, materiality and mentality. The sense of hearing arises depending on the ear, while the ear and sound are two elements of materiality. The sense of hearing is the element of mentality. In order to know clearly any of these two kinds of materiality and mentality, every occasion of hearing should be noted as hearing, hearing, and so also smelling, smelling should be noted on every occasion of smelling and tasting, tasting, on every occasion of tasting. The sensation of touch in the body should be noted in the very same way, where there is a kind of material element known as bodily sensitivity throughout the body, which receives every impression of touch every kind of touch, either agreeable or disagreeable, usually comes in contact with the bodily sensitivity, and from this there arises body consciousness, which feels or knows the touch on each occasion. It will now be seen that at every moment of touching there are two elements of materiality, the body sensitivity and the tangible object, and one element of mentality, knowing of touch. In order to know these things distinctly at every moment of touching, the practice of noting as touching, touching, has to be carried out. This merely refers to the common form of sensation of touch. There are special forms which accompany painful or disagreeable sensations, such as feeling stiffness or tiredness in the body or limbs, feeling hot, pain, numb, aches, etc. Because feeling, Vedana, predominates in these cases, it should be noted as feeling hot, feeling tired, feeling painful, etc., as the case may be. It may also, it may also be mentioned that there occur many sensations of touch in the hands, the legs, and so on, on every occasion of bending, stretching, or moving. Because of mentality wanting to move, stretch or bend, the, ma the material activities of moving, stretching or bending, etc. occur in series. It may not be possible to notice these incidents at the outset. They can only be noticed after some time. On gaining experience by practice, it is mentioned here for the sake of general information. And so, for example, I can feel, you know, my shoulders are starting to be tense and I can also kind of get a hot sensation from clasping my hands together 
and now there's a fly I can hear something around my ears and so these are perfectly fine meditation objects such as feeling in the shoulders of stiffness or feeling the heat or the pressure be between the hands or you know even hearing my own voice in the ear is like a sensation of uh, of hearing and so I know hearing arises and so there are different ways of, of doing this uh, at any moment okay and this was just uh, me kind of explaining a little bit because the text was talking about something that is based on the practice so I thought I might share that moving on all activities and movements are in, in changing, etc., are done by mentality. When mentality wills to bend, there arises a series of inward movements of hand or the leg. When mentality wills to stretch or move, there arises a series of outward movements or movements to and from. They fall away soon after they occur. And at the very point of occurrence, as one will notice later. In every case of bending, stretching or other, or other activities, <clears throat> there arises first a series of intentions, moments of mentality, inducing or causing causing in the hands and legs a series of material activities such as stiffening, bending, stretching or moving to and from. These activities come up against one another. These activities come up against other material elements, the bodily sensitivity and on every occasion of contact of contact between material activities and sensitive qualities there arises body consciousness which feels or knows the sensation of touch it is therefore clear that material activities are predominating factors in these cases it is necessary to notice the predominating factors and if not, there will surely arise the wrong view which regards these activities as the doings of an I. I am bending. I am stretching. My hands or my legs. This practice of noting as bending, stretching, moving is carried out for the purpose of removing such wrong views. And we can just take this one as well. It would be awesome to get this in as well. And the next, and continuing on, mind. Depending on the mind base, there arises a series of mental activities such as thinking, imagining, etc. Or generally speaking, a series of mental of mental activities arises depending on the body. In reality. Each case is a composition of mentality and materiality, mind base being materiality, uh, thinking, imagining, and so forth being mentality. In order to be able to notice materiality and mentality clearly, thinking, imagining, and so forth, should be noted in each case. After having, after having carried out the practice in the manner indicated above for some time, there may be an improvement in concentration. One will notice that the mind no longer wanders about, but remains fixed on the object to which it is directed. At the same time, 
the power of noticing has considerably developed. On every occasion of noting, one notices only two processes of materiality and mentality. A dual set of object, materiality, and mental state, mentality, which makes the note of the object arising together. Again, on proceeding further with the practice of contemplation, after some time, one notices that no nothing remains permanent, but that everything is in a state of flux. The new things arise each time. Each of them is noted as it arises. Whatever arises then passes away immediately, and immediately another arises, which is again noted and which then passes away. Thus the process of arising and passing away goes on, which clearly shows that nothing is permanent. One therefore realizes that things are not permanent. Because one sees that they arise and pass away immediately. This is insight into impermanence. Anicca nupassana jnana. Then one also realizes that arising and passing are not desirable. This is insight into suffering. Dukkha nupassana jnana. Besides, one usually experiences many painful sensations in the body such as tiredness, heat, aching, and at the time of noting these sensations one generally feels that this body is a collection of suffering. This is also insight into suffering. Then, at every time of noting, it is found that the elements of materiality and mentality occur according to their respective nature and condition and not according to one's wishes. One therefore realizes that they are elements, they are not governable, they are not a person or a living entity. And this is insight into non-self. Anatta nupassana jnana. On having fully acquired these insights into impermanence, suffering, and non-self, the maturity of knowledge of the path, makanyana, and knowledge of fruition, palanyana, takes place, and the realization of nibbana is won. By winning the realization of nibbana. In the first stage, one is freed from the round of rebirth in the realms of miserable existence. Everyone should therefore endeavor to reach this first stage, the path and the fruit of stream entry. As a minimum measure of protection against unfortunate rebirth, Sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu. I also forgot to do the intro, so we're gonna do an outro. Namo Buddhasa. Honor to the fully enlightened one. We can also do the long one. Namo Tassa, Bhagavato, Arahato, Sama Sambuddhasa. Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, and the Perfectly Self-Enlightened One. And I think this is going to be enough for today. We went through seeing, to hearing, etc. And then we went through um, the third uh, one called Mind. And so the next part is going to be Beginner's Exercises. And that's going to be for actual meditators. And so,
This is going to be like um, the next step for anyone who's interested. Because, you know, you can't just listen and do nothing. It doesn't work like that. And so, we're going to finish today's um, reading and scrolling out to the top. Again, we were reading from the Satipatthana Vipassana by the Venerable Mahasi Sayadaw. And I hope you have an awesome day and may you find true peace, happiness and freedom from suffering. And all the best. Peace.